Hello friends, this video on force and pressure part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have spoken so much about pressure, we, let us talk about an important concept that is atmospheric pressure. So pressure is also exerted by atmosphere. So the pressure exerted by atmosphere around us is called atmospheric pressure. Now before I talk about atmospheric pressure, I hope all of you know what is atmosphere. Atmosphere is nothing but the layers of air which surrounds the earth. They, that is called atmosphere. Now there are many layers of atmosphere. In fact, the layers of atmosphere exist up to several kilometers from the earth's surface. Now there are many layers like troposphere, stratosphere, uh, mesosphere, exosphere. So these are different layers. Now if you actually look at the height of these layers from the surface of the earth, you will see that it is it goes beyond a few hundred kilometers. Like the first layer come get, is up to some 11 kilometers. Again from up to some 50 kilometers is the second layer. Again from 50 kilometer onwards is the third layer. So it goes to about some 100 to 100 kilometers. So till that stretch we have the atmosphere atmosphere. So that means the height of the atmosphere is quite long because the atmosphere is that much in height. So it, it goes up to few hundred kilometers. So it is quite, the height is quite long. So we can try to understand the concept of an atmospheric pressure in this way. So atmosphere is, a, a, it, it is like an object which has a very big height something like this. So the atmosphere will have a big height because it goes up to se several kilometers and this lengthy object is going to exert some pressure over a particular area. So let us suppose here the area which we have considered is a unit area. So the pressure exerted by this column over this unit area is defined as atmospheric pressure. So that is the pressure exerted by a long cylinder which is carrying air and we assume that this cylinder is carrying air because inside the atmosphere also we have air and why are we considering a long cylinder? Long cylinder is being considered because the atmosphere has goes up to several 100 kilometers so it is also going to be quite long so this long cylinder is like the atmosphere and whatever pressure it exerts on a unit area that is defined as atmospheric pressure so basically this pressure is exerted due to the weight of the air so now as we saw that atmosphere is made up of no air, I mean gases, not only gases but it is made up of several molecules and each of these they exert force on each other and also on objects they hit. So atmosphere exerts pressure on everything, when I say everything that even include all of us. So atmosphere is also exerting pressure on us but we do not feel the pressure. Do you know why? You Because you might wonder that all of us exist on this earth and atmosphere is exerting a pressure on earth. So we should also feel that heaviness due to atmospheric pressure. But we don't feel it because it is compensated by the pressure exerted by gases within our bodies. Because even inside our body, for example, let us suppose this is a person. So atmosphere is exerting some pressure here. But even inside our body, we have several gases and they are also exerting some pressure. So both of these get compensated and that is why we do not feel the pressure that is being exerted on us by the atmosphere. So looking at all this, we can say that the weight of air on a column of unit area is atmospheric pressure. So if you consider this column of unit area, that means one un unit is nothing but one. So on this unit area, whatever is the weight of the air, that is nothing but atmospheric pressure. Now let us look at some of the examples where we can actually feel the presence of atmospheric pressure. So one such example is the rubber sucker. Have you ever seen rubber sucker in your home? You'd have seen it is often made up of plastics and uh, it is it looks somewhat like this. So when you try to stick it to a surface and mostly a smooth surface, it gets stuck very nicely and then it becomes very difficult to bring it out. So what exactly happens here? Now when you put it on a smooth surface, the air in the rubber sucker is forced out. 
so here so this area within inside this area there is some space so in that space some air is present and the air is forced out when you just try to press it on a smooth surface now this causes the space between the surface and the sucker to have a low pressure now when the air comes out so the pressure decreases now as a result the contact between the rubber sucker surface that is this is the rubber sucker and this is the smooth surface so this is a smooth surface over which we want to fix this rubber sucker and this is the rubber sucker so if you look at these two surfaces so the contact between these two surfaces is airtight now external atmospheric pressure is present because atmosphere is exerting pressure on everything outside it now that atmospheric pressure is quite higher because here it is almost airtight all the air has been forced out so the pressure is very less so this external atmospheric pressure which is higher will act on the rubber sucker to press it securely against the wall so outer pressure external pressure is more and this pressure will force the sucker to stay attached to the wall so it is due to the difference between the external pressure and the internal pressure that the rubber sucker is able to stick tightly to the smooth surface now if you want to pull the rubber sucker out what do you need to do you need to apply a force here you need to apply a force in this direction in order to bring it out and this applied force has to be greater than the atmospheric pressure because it is the atmospheric pressure which is actually uh, fixing it or which is actually keeping it attached to the smooth surface so if you want to bring it out then the applied force has to be greater than the atmospheric pressure so that is one example where we see the presence of atmospheric pressure another example would could be the drinking straw all of you would have experienced it whenever you go to a restaurant and you order for any cold drink or any juice you they generally serve it to you with a straw now what happens while you are drinking with a straw now while drinking you have to suck the straw so when you suck the straw you see that the liquid flows upwards right now why the liquid flows upwards that's because when you suck the straw this causes the pressure inside the straw to decrease now when the pressure inside the straw decreases so pressure inside the straw decreases so the external atmospheric pressure that is the atmospheric pressure let me write it as p a t m that is the external atmospheric pressure is quite high as compared to the pressure inside the straw right so this high external atmospheric pressure will act on the surface of water in the glass so it will act here and this pressure will cause it to rise through the straw because the pressure will cause this to move down as it moves down then the liquid tends to move up through the straw so again because of the difference between the internal pressure and the at external atmospheric pressure the drinking straw is able to bring the fluid in the upward direction when it is being sucked by a person so these are some of the examples where we see that the difference in pressure can actually uh, make several changes now how much is the atmospheric pressure what is the value of atmospheric pressure that is being exerted on various objects on the earth so if you be you want to get an idea about how much atmospheric pressure is being exerted let us have a look at the value so the value of atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 pascals okay so now the value of this pressure also changes with height now as the height increases or decreases the value of atmospheric pressure also decreases now we are not going to talk about that in detail right now you will talk, learn that in your higher classes but in order to have a reference now since the value changes everywhere so the reference has been taken as the sea level and at a sea at sea level the value of atmospheric pressure is 1 into 10 to the power 5 pascals which is quite high and this value of atmospheric pressure is denoted as one atmospheres so in fact atmospheres is also used as a unit of pressure so now we, do, we, we will quickly talk about the various units of pressure how do we measure atmospheric pressure it is measured by an instrument called mercury barometer so this is the instrument which is you or device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure 
and what are the units of measurement how do we know like we have newton for force similarly for pressure the si unit is pascal which is denoted as pa so that is the si unit but the and the value of uh, one at the sea level the value of atmospheric pressure is 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 pascals another unit of atmosphere is Another unit of pressure is atmospheres, which is denoted as ATM. And one atmosphere is defined as the value of uh, atmospheric pressure at sea level. So that is one atmosphere is equal to 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.